Until now, we have seen that the picture of an atom as a hard, indivisible ball that makes up all matter has been disproved. In fact, an atom is a neutral entity that seems to be made of smaller subatomic things called electrons, which are negatively charged. In the second decade of the early 20th century, Thomson's atomic model was put to test by many scientists. It is during these times that Rutherford conducted his now famous gold foil experiment. Between the late 19th century and the early 20th century, pioneers like Henry Becquerel and Marie Curie studied the phenomenon of radioactivity. They observed that certain elements by their own nature emit radiation and called this phenomenon as radioactivity and termed the elements as radioactive. Scientists observed three kinds of rays, which are alpha, beta, and gamma. Rutherford figured out that alpha rays were made of high energy particles carrying two units of positive charge and four atomic mass units. In his experiments, he found that alpha particles were indeed helium nuclei, since they picked up two electrons to yield helium gas. We haven't even begun discussing the Rutherford's experiment, but an idea of radioactivity is an important requirement. Ernest Rutherford stumbled upon one of the most important ideas of particle physics, which is relevant even to this day. Being a pioneer of radioactivity, he was curious to see what would happen if he bombarded atoms with alpha rays, which we know are made up of helium nuclei. Even today, this method is super relevant. As in, we get two particles to be accelerated to extreme velocities and then get them to collide and study the effects of such an explosion to look for fundamental particles. In fact, this is what the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland does, the LHC. It is a huge underground tunnel that spans across 27 kilometers. Imagine two tiny subatomic particles to be accelerated across such a huge distance and brought into an explosive collision. Coming back to Rutherford's experiment, he acquired a radioactive material, radium bromide, from his very good friend, Marie Curie. Now, this substance, RABR, emits alpha particles and Rutherford, with Hans Geiger, developed a detector which counts the number of radioactive particles. To start with, he recorded the count rate of radium bromide as in he made a note of the number of alpha particles emitted per minute. He obtained a very thin gold foil, say just several atoms thick, and put the foil right in between or right in the path of the stream of alpha particles emitted from radium bromide. In other words, he got alpha particles to collide with gold atoms. Remember, according to the plum pudding model, most of the pudding is a blob of mass and positive charge, while the tiny electrons are embedded randomly throughout this mass or pudding. So, according to the then existing theory, when helium nuclei are incident on gold atoms or atoms, nothing at all should happen. The nuclei should be able to pass through the atoms and only small reflections should be observed as per the existing theory. And the Geiger counter verified this as well. With or without the gold foil, the counter recorded the same rate or the same amount of alpha particles. So initial readings and conclusions match with the plum pudding model that Sir Thompson had proposed. Marston, an undergraduate student, was very eager to work in this experiment, which now seemed to be all but over because it seems to give the same results as the plum pudding model. Now, this undergraduate student, Marston, teamed up with his mentor, Geiger, and they repeated the same experiment, except with a small twist. Instead of having a detector on the other side of the gold foil, they moved it around, looking for scattered alpha particles where they are not supposed to be. But the experiment doesn't make much sense, does it? As in, we have already accounted for all the alpha particles, so then why look for them in the wrong places, where they are not supposed to be? Such is life. Things that don't make sense, things which seem absurd, pop out of nowhere to completely alter our version of reality. While most of the alpha particles were undeflected, 
a small fraction of the particles were deflected by a small angle. The epic twist in the experiment was that a small number of alpha particles, say one in about 20,000 particles, were deflected by huge, ridiculous angles. In fact, they couldn't believe that some alpha particles seemed to undergo a head-on collision and were shot right back towards the source with a huge deflection. Incredible as it seems, they assumed that this was due to an error in the design of experiment. That somehow, some alpha particles originated from this source and scattered from it. But when they removed the gold foil, there were no major deflections. Now, this is something that the plum pudding model just could not explain. Rutherford repeated this experiment using foils of other metals and found similar results. In his own words, Rutherford explains, It was quite the most incredible event that has ever happened to me in my life. It was almost as incredible as if you fired a 15-inch cannon shell at a piece of tissue paper and it came back right to hit you. Coming from an accomplished scientist who was the first to date the age of the Earth, a man who married and had a daughter, that claim says it all, how massive this experiment is. To be able to explain the results of this experiment, Rutherford proposed a planetary model for the structure of atom. According to this model, an atom has a tiny, dense central core or the nucleus which contains practically the entire mass of the atom, leaving the rest of the atom almost empty. The radius of the nucleus is about 10 to the negative 15 meters compared to that of the atom, which is about 10 to the negative 10 meters. If the nucleus were the size of a cricket ball, the entire atom would be having a diameter of say about 5 kilometers. It was this empty space around the nucleus which allowed the alpha particles to pass through undeflected. The nucleus is surrounded by electrons which move around the nucleus with a very high speed in circular orbits. The Rutherford's model of atom thus resembles the solar system in which the nucleus plays the role of the sun and the electrons play the role of that of revolving planets. Electrons and the nucleus are held together by the electrostatic forces of attraction. For the time being, we could imagine the atom to look like this. For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.